The ring bearing the palm symbol had immense magical power, just like the magical ring in the stories. In the morning, milk and curd sellers, flower basket sellers, curry sellers, fruit sellers and many other professions, accountants, clerks, etc. were trying to enter the fort in large numbers. The gatekeepers of the fort were showing their barbaric authority as they opened the gates of the fort and let them in one by one. But the delay was only when our young hero showed the palm engraved ring, and the guards, with great courtesy, opened one of the castle doors, Vandiyadeva also entered the fort. Aha! I don't know when he set foot inside Tanjore Fort. How many major programs followed from that? Wasn't it an important event in the history of the Chola Empire? After entering the fort, Vandiyadeva was in awe for a while. Kanchi was the capital of the old Pallava Empire. It was repeatedly attacked by enemies. The mansions, halls and other buildings were old and dilapidated and overgrown with mildew. Buildings with beautiful sculptures. However, many parts were crumbling and dilapidated. Only a few mansions, which were renovated after the arrival of Adityakari Kalar, exaggerated the city's dilapidated appearance, looking like blossoms on a fallen tree. The appearance of Tanjore was the opposite. All new mansions, new halls. Amidst the whitewashed houses, a few red-baked brick buildings shone like jewels set among diamonds and pearls. The trees that grew in the gardens of the palace had the nutrients of the red earth, and they flourished and flourished. The dense foliage of Punne, Coconut, Ashoka, Government, Ale, Jackfruit, Neem etc. trees with many shades of emerald green gave pleasure to the eyes and excitement to the mind. This is a city newly built by Mayan, a super-powerful magician. A new excitement was born on entering this new city, the heart was full of fire, full of pride without reason. Vandiyadeva, who had observed the security of the fort and the compulsions to enter the fort, thought that it would be deserted without much movement of people inside. But on the contrary, the streets were crowded with JJ. Horses and horse-drawn chariots drove with a noise that shook the earth. The bells of the elephants, who walked calmly and majestically as if the black hills were moving, could be heard on all four sides. The shouts of flour, curry, fruit, milk and curd sellers filled the ears. From time to time the ringing of bells announcing the time was mixed with the ringing of the pear tree. Madhura hymns sung by Manga Iyar mingled with the sounds of musical instruments. Everything was like a festive frenzy. A city is not a city. This is what the capital of an ever-expanding empire looks like. Vandiyathevan did not want to pretend that he was completely new to such a city. When someone asks for directions, he looks up and down and asks, Are you new to this town? They will talk indifferently. They would even mistake a person asking for directions to the palace as a peddler from outside. Therefore, he must find the emperor's palace and leave without asking anyone for directions, it is by no means impossible. Makara torrents and flags appeared on the rooftops in every direction. They fought with the strong wind and flew with a fluttering noise. Tiger vines and palm vines were abundant. A huge tiger flag flew majestically overshadowing all the other flags. Assuming that it must be the emperor's palace, Valavarayan walked towards the direction where the flag flew, thinking about what he had to do above. The first step is to meet the emperor in person and give him the leaf. In addition to this, what Adithakari Kalar told to convey verbally in person should also be said. The emperor could not be seen without the permission of the chief minister. How to get his permission? The deity assisted in entering the fort. But can it be said that God will guide the whole thing? We have to find a strategy to see the emperor. What a trick! The brain that came by way of the monkey clan. Do some work and see. Let your imagination run wild. It is not only epic and poetry writers who need imagination. Those involved in state affairs like you need imagination, where, show your hand line, let's see. Vandiyadevan confirmed that the great plunderer had not yet reached the fort. When he entered the fort, he asked one of the guards standing inside, Why, father? Has the hunter returned? He asked. Who are you asking, brother? Chinnavar is in the palace. 
I don't know that. I'm just asking about the old man who went to Midland. Oh. The great man had gone to Midland? I did not know that. The queen's tooth came back last evening. The great king has not arrived yet, word has come that he may return tonight. Said the guard. This is good news. Before the great reaper returns, he should see the emperor and give him the leaf. What is the way? An idea arose in Vandiyadeva's brain. At that very moment the look of concern disappeared from his face, a mischievous smile and a cheerful bloom appeared. He did not have to wander too far to reach the emperor's palace. He kept looking at the big tiger flag. Soon he reached the palace gate. Aha! What a palace it is! Isn't it like Devendra's palace in Devaloka and Vikramaditya's palace in Ujjain? What a marvel of sculpture on the pillars of the hall! A horse carved on each pillar looks like it is galloping with its four legs raised. There were many routes leading to the palace from all four directions. At the end of each lane stood two horsemen and some footmen. Many of the people who walked those streets without coming close to him have turned away. Some people came near them, stood for a while and looked at the front of the palace, looked at the tiger flag and left. If the crowd seemed to be standing too long, the guards signalled with their hands and made them leave. The people who were standing in the crowd did not speak in a hurry and spoke softly to their ears. Vandiyathevan did not hesitate at all like the others. Walking swiftly and nimbly, he approached the palace lane guards. Immediately the two horses stood facing each other. Those on horseback, those standing below, all had their tusks blocking the way. Vandiyadeva held out his magic ring. That's it, as soon as they saw it, the pride of those soldiers was also included. One by one the three stared at the ring. All right, make way. Said one. The two fences immediately parted and gave way, Vandiyathevan walked with Mitko. However, so what? How many police officers are like this? Where is the little scoundrel? How to inquire? Who to ask? The emperor could not be seen without the consent of the minor vassal, where is the sick emperor in this vast palace? How to know that? Vandiyathevan looked back as he realized that some people were crowding behind him. Yes, a group of ten or fifteen people came and stood near the guards. They wore high silk pedestals. They wore pearl garlands, makara candis and kundalams in their ears. Some of them used to wash their foreheads with sandalwood, saffron, and chavita pot. Cow! If you look at them, don't they look like poets? Yes, I knew in a second that they are a group of poets. One of the guards, supposed to be their leader, shouted, The Cavareas have come. Make way! Having said that, he looked at one of the soldiers and said, Take him to the little rascal, who is in the Asthana Mandapam. He said. Gentlemen. If you get a prize, go back this way. If you don't get a prize, go another way. And others laughed at what he said. Vandiyathevan, who was standing for a while listening to this discourse, said, the fruit slipped and fell into the milk. He thought that. If you go with these poets, you can reach the place where there is a small farmer. You don't have to ask anyone for directions. Then, there is our skill, there is also luck. With this in mind, the poet went with the crowd.